The secrets of the trade are what every editor has in their back pocket to get the job done better and faster. Finding out these secrets is the key to having a better working experience. Sometimes those secrets are techniques and processes, other times they're tools and plugins. And in this video, I'm gonna show you some of my favorite tools and plugins that I use regularly. Some of them are free, some of them are paid, but they're all awesome. And it doesn't matter which editing software you use, most of these are universal and can be used with any of the programs. In the simple days, it used to be that if you're an editor, you just edit. But now most editors are required to have way more skills like motion graphics to elevate every edit that they work on. And that's where Motion VFX comes in clutch for me. Over the last five years, I have used so many of their plugins and templates to help build out all the edits that I work on. I've used every single version of MTuber that they've released all the way up to their most recent release of MTuber 4, which just adds to the versatility. So if you're working on a lot of social media content, MTuber from Motion VFX is fantastic and is my go-to. And I love that they keep updating the kinds of styles and the elements that they built into it. And my favorite thing about Motion VFX is that they're not just templates, they're completely customizable, colors, fonts, sizing, and you can mix and match and put a whole bunch of these together to build your own broadcast package and quickly change it up. And the fact that they have it for Final Cut Pro, DaVinci Resolve, and Adobe Premiere and After Effects, it has been such an asset for me as a content creator, but also working with clients and being able to cherry pick a lot of these elements and use them. Because sometimes having a simple text animation or a bar or a title or a circle around an element as an editor, because being an editor is one thing and having to become a motion graphics designer is a whole nother specialty that people have to develop. The fact that there are services like Motion VFX that come in and design stuff really well that you can then customize and build into your, your edits. For example, MTuber 4 would have everything that you would need. They have camera moves. They have backgrounds, they have logo animations, they have transitions, animations. If you do ad reads, they have little simple animations that will help you create faster. And the fact that they have it for Final Cut Pro, DaVinci Resolve, and Adobe is crucial for why I use it as often as I do. And for the most part, most of their plugins are you buy it once and you own it. So as they release new plugins, you still get access to your older ones. So I know if I create something in Final Cut Pro, but then a client requires me to move it to DaVinci Resolve or Premiere, I can then more than likely be able to recreate it in those other applications. Because a lot of their plugins are now created for each one of these editing softwares. And these are a few more Motion VFX plugins that I use, M Title Boost. This is fantastic for titles or title cards. I use, if you've seen any of my video, this is one of my favorite ones to use, Distorted. I use this a lot, but this whole package is fantastic. Another one is the MKBHD package. It's one of my favorite ones to use because it has a lot of tools and effects that are good for zooming in and zooming out or doing a constant zoom into something. It's a really versatile set of plugins and effects. And the other one is M tutorial because I do a lot of tutorials. So I use a lot of these templates in my courses and in my videos. And speaking of motion VFX, one of my favorite plugins that they have for Final Cut Pro and DaVinci is M Camrig. This is a super useful and free plugin where you can do camera moves in those applications without having to think too much of it. Everything is kind of set out to create really nice, smooth camera moves without having to think about it or to be a motion graphics designer. And they have this for Final Cut Pro and DaVinci Resolve. I have a whole video talking about motion VFX about how I can't believe that this is a free plugin that they are just giving away. But it is free and it is awesome. Another plugin that I use is for audio. I know that DaVinci Resolve and Final Cut Pro have their own AI denoiser, but it's kind of like, it's kind of, you turn it on and you finesse it a little bit, it's on or off and how much strength it has. Clear by Supertone allows you to keep the ambience, like the background, you can actually bring back some of it, but also clear up the voice and then also add or remove reverb. And they have a lot of presets that you can go in. I like going into studio and then kind of refining it, but the fact that they have presets already built in and you can create your own. And I like that 
if I do anything here and I have to move this whole project over to DaVinci Resolve from Final Cut Pro, I could use the same plugin, get the exact same results instead of using the built-in tools that are gonna produce their own results within the apps individually. So I like using this. It's a VTS plugin that works across all the editors. And that's gonna be a theme through this entire video where I like that I can use it regardless of the editor that I'm working in. Because I use Cinema 4D and After Effects, having the Red Giant Universe suite of plugins is quite awesome because they have such a huge library of plugins that have so many different presets built into it and they're available in Final Cut Pro. They're mostly built for Premiere Pro and After Effects, but a lot of them are available in Final Cut Pro and DaVinci, like something as simple as doing a progress bar. Now on the surface, it just looks like a simple progress bar, but this is all customizable. And on top of that, you can actually go in and choose many other styles within that one effect. So if I wanted to change this, click apply, and now we have a circle. And again, everything is customizable in their parameters. And this will work in Final Cut Pro, DaVinci Resolve, Premiere, and After Effects. And it's a huge suite of effects. In Final Cut Pro, there's only a few that come through, but it's something definitely worth checking out. If you're already using other programs like Cinema 4D, there's a lot of motion graphics and, and higher end tools that can be used right in DaVinci Resolve, After Effects, and Final Cut Pro. It's a whole suite of effects and plugins that I use regularly that are definitely higher end, but it's the Red Giant Universe plugin package. As an editor, I find that I use a lot. They have a lot of effects that aren't available anywhere else except from Red Giant. And I've talked about Color Finale before and it's exclusively for Final Cut Pro, but it is probably the best tool to use to do any kind of serious color grading in Final Cut Pro. And recently they added AI masking, which really helps focus on color grading and isolating people and being able to adjust them accordingly. So without having to do any kind of masking or color selections or anything like that, it just, it finds the people in the shot and refines it. So you can quickly isolate the people and color grade them separately from the background. And in this case, it would have been better if I created a group so then I can use the mask and then separate the background from the foreground. There's so many different options that you can do with it. And one really cool thing with it is that they actually have a mask output. I can use this output as its own layer. So if I wanted to put something behind, I can quickly do that. Overall, it's my favorite color grading package for Final Cut Pro. If you do use DaVinci Resolve, those tools are amazing. If you like using Final Cut Pro, Color Finale should probably be in your toolkit. If you don't have Color Finale and you wanna achieve the same effect where you isolate the people, Keeper from Sheffield Softworks will let you achieve the same thing, where it uses AI to isolate the people, cut them out from the background, then you can put titles and animations between them or behind them. And the latest update of Color Finale has added subtractive grading, halation, and bloom. I'm really happy that DaVinci Resolve and Premiere Pro have added the transcribe feature in the application. Sometimes I want it to do a little bit more than those are available. And sometimes I want to work in Final Cut Pro, and that's where Gling comes in. It's probably one of my favorite tools outside of the ecosystem of Final Cut Pro, DaVinci, or Premiere, and it works really well with all three of those apps. Especially if you have a multicam shoot that you're working on, Gling is probably the closest thing that I've ever found to an assistant editor. Not only will it transcribe the entire thing, but it'll also go through and remove bad takes. It will remove silences and using AI, it will choose the best takes and it will only keep the good takes and remove the bad takes. And at any point you can export the XML to Adobe Premiere, Final Cut, and Resolve. And Final Cut and Resolve have multicam. So it'll create a multicam clip in that editor, and then you can add in all your other cameras and sync them up and start editing your multicam. But there's a lot of other AI assistant tools that are built into this. So if you're working on a lot of YouTube content, it'll give you a title generator based, based on the script, and you can actually change the tone 
and make it extra clickbaity or make it very transparent on what the video is. It'll keep a history of all the other generations that it's done per that project. It's a great tool that I use often. As you can see, I've used it quite a bit on almost every project that I did. I use Gling extensively when I was creating my course for enhanced editing, the art of mastering editing in Final Cut Pro. So I use this quite a bit. Now there are other tools that I use as well that do very much the same thing. Time Bolt is another one where it cuts out silences. It has an, an um check as well. So it'll get rid of all those filler words that you're working with. And it's really quick and it also does multicam. So it does a lot of the same things that Gling does. So that's Time Bolt. But you can also do it in Premiere Pro. It's already built into it where you can remove the silences if that's all you're looking for. So Gling and Time Bolt virtually do the same thing. I just like Gling better because it has more versatility for the things that I needed to do. And the last one is Ecamm. And not because of streaming or anything specific to YouTube, but more because I'm able to create a private network between myself and a client and have them sit in the edit with me, where I'm able to do a virtual cam out of just the timeline. So for instance, if I'm working in Final Cut Pro, right now you're seeing my screen and I don't wanna share my screen the way this is. But if you have, say, Final Cut set up properly, you can actually send it. So I can send just the viewer to the client so they don't see the entire program that we're working with. And that way they can focus on just what I'm working on. And if I wanted to, I can pop in every once in a while and I can talk through what I'm thinking about. So again, they're not distracted by the whole timeline and all the, the content here, but they see exactly what I want them to be looking at. And at any point I can just pop out, they can watch the edit as it unfolds in front of them. And I love having this clean feed out of Final Cut Pro and you can do it in DaVinci Resolve. If you have multiple screens, you can actually do a clean feed out to, under workspaces, you can go to clean feed and send it to another monitor. So you have multiple displays, you can create a clean feed out through one of them. Again, I can pop in and say, hey, we can talk about the edit as we're going through the entire edit. So Ecamm Live, allows me to be able to send a clean feed of just the timeline to the client and have them sit in for the editing session, but only focus on that clean feed and not look at the entire editing software. And then they get distracted by the all the different screens and, and they're looking at this tiny portion. And it works for Final Cut and DaVinci Resolve. I haven't to be honest, I haven't tried it with Premiere Pro, but I'm pretty sure that you'd be able to build it that way as well. So Ecamm Live, not only is it great for doing screen captures and live streaming and having interviewees come in and out, it's a great tool to be able to have your clients sit in on the editing sessions, even if they're on the other side of the world. It's a great tool to bring them closer. So those are the tools and plugins that I use every day to help me edit faster and more efficiently. But in this video, I talk about the seven techniques that every editor should learn. So make sure you go check that out. As always, thanks for watching.